So are you pottering around with your plant today? Are you wanting some background noise and to kind of see what I do when I care for my plants? I thought today let's do a video and show you exactly what I do on a heavy watering day. Hi, my name is Nemo, this is my channel, Has Planted Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my basic passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical house plants. So this is going to be a test because I've got a brand spanking new camera apparently with a half decent mic on it. So I am not mic'd up, I am hoping this is a recording, otherwise this is going to be a video with a whole bunch of speeding up and voice over for me and editing, which I'm really hoping it's not going to be. However, a lot of people have always requested and I've always found a bit odd to film something like this which is filming me pottering around with my plants, doing some watering, doing some care, showing you what I'm going through purely because I've always got in my head that I need to do some heavy editing afterwards. Hopefully this won't be the case with this video and I'm just gonna not have to do many if any cuts but that remains to be seen. But yeah without further ado let me talk to you about how I do things. So I've usually got uh, just a regular tray. I think this is actually meant to be a cat litter tray, but I've never used it for that. Um, and I put the pots in here and water them, and you'll see that in just a second. I think most of this is going to be quite low. I do not have a wine angle lens yet, but hopefully that will be coming in the future. And then I've got my tiny watering can whilst I try not to drop it. And my large watering can, which is full of water. This is one gallon or five litres, I think. Five litres or one gallon. And the smallest one. And this will all start making sense. The only other thing... It's a turkey baster. <laughs> oh, yeah. And interestingly enough, uh, I've actually shown my phone now. My phone for my plant care app to tell me what I need to be watering when. And I'll just go through it and I'll talk to you as I go through my plant care. Now, first one I need to do is my propagation of the heterocraspidum. And this was from the original plant poachers that I did on Equigenera a few months back. But let me show you. It is up here. It is looking as scraggly as anything. However, what I would normally do with this is because this has got a water reservoir at the bottom, I'll just make sure that the water reservoir has got some water in it. Check and see if it needs a bit of watering. Yes, it does, just a touch. And what I'll do just to make my life a bit easier, instead of walking around with a massive watering can, is I'll fill up my small one. I know this sounds and probably is a bit over the top, but what I'll do then is just quickly water through Normally I would want to see the water flush through, but as I know that there's still some water in the reservoir, that's fine. Normally I wouldn't do this with my plants that are in semi-hydro, but with this one I know that it tends to be a bit more of a thirsty filadentin, bizarrely enough. So that's how I would do this. Then I need to water my Aglianema Silver Bay, probably the only Aglianema that I still have in my care. I have never been able to keep these things happy. And yeah, this is the tiniest little plant that I got ages ago. It's looking a bit beat up, but I am keeping it because I have never been able to keep an Aglianema happy, basically. So I'll show you what I'll do because I can't show you on the table, but what I would normally do on the table down below and just water it through as you would regular soil. Wait until it drips down the bottom. Make sure that I've got rid of most of the water in that. Put it back into the cash pot. done. And that is pretty much the vibe generally with most of my waterings of things in my semi hydro mixes basically. Now, I'll apologise now in advance because I'm probably going to be going on and off the camera at different stages is to bring plants forward. Um, I did have the, the tracking device, but that was 
for my old camera and it doesn't work with this camera so <laughs> I know it's nice when you buy a really expensive bit of kit and then you need to rebuy a whole bunch of other things because nothing works with it <laughs> so that's going to be coming soon again and as I'm going through because I've talked about my app before I can just go in and tap and say okay done done refresh so I know what's happening next um, and then I've got my anterior VGI. So my anterior VGI, this is the one that I've talked about in the past as well. This is not my big VGI. This is a small one, which ironically enough was the first one that I bought, which was considerably larger, but now has been struggling ever since then. Oh, and I'll show you this. This doesn't need watering, but my Forgetii is just getting a new leaf and it is so, so pretty. Um, the old leaves are a bit battered and a bit bruised, but ah. But this is the baby Avicii. It does have quite a bit of that ruffling on there. Some of the leaves are looking a bit ragged. Do I need a slightly smaller pot for this? Yes, because this is a bit ridiculous for what it is. But as always, I will just water this through. And I'll show you without hopefully spilling on everything. And that will just run through to the bottom. I'll leave it so that it is a tiny bit of water at the bottom of that because of the reservoir, because this sits quite close to a radiator and at the moment that radiator is doing the most is in this room so what i want to make sure is that this doesn't dry out too too much because uh, alberium Even know how many down that is, but there's probably another. This is a good thing because it gives, gives me an idea on the app on how many more plants I need to do. I have got just over 60 plants to water today, which is terrible. There's a couple of plants that I haven't watered and I won't be doing. I have watered, but I won't be kind of adding it onto this because that needed a bit of time. And I'll talk you through that, which is my Anthurium pedatum. I'm also looking so I can tick them off as I'm talking through my Painted Lady and my Florida Ghost, which I'm point behind me. Hopefully, you might be able to see the Painted Lady is right at the back. You can see some of that kind of autumnal colors that are happening there. You probably can't see the Pedatum, which is further back. And the Florida Ghost is right in front here, basically. So those all the way that i water those is i've kind of timed it and know roughly that they need watering every seven days and that's kind of kept true for a good few years now they have got bigger dishes underneath them so i will water them before i usually take duke for a walk and hopefully i might even have a picture or a video to add somewhere of a duke update and what i'll do is i'll let them sit for i don't know say half an hour whilst I'm taking the dog for a walk in that water kind of bottom watering them essentially then I'll come back and that's where this comes in really handy because I'll basically turkey based dirt <laughs> siphon all the water out of those reservoirs just because they are all in a soil mix so I don't want them sitting in water they're not in semi hydro basically so that's already been done because that's earlier on I know a few people have asked how chickens are doing, and I will add a video here. The chickens have taken up an awful lot of my time over the Christmas break because it has, I think we've had four or five storms back to back. I've also given them a new chicken run, and everything needs to be covered up. Everything was getting ripped to shreds because of the wind. It's been a journey, but uh, I will show you here. And one of the chickens, Delilah, the brown chicken, has unfortunately <laughs> gone into brood in the middle of the coldest months of the year, which is great fun. So there's a whole bunch of me trying to get her out of the chicken coop into the run so she can drink and eat water. And the video that I have, I took on a very windy day when I went to kind of repair things around and 
That is Delilah brown chicken, specifically, specifically in the dirt, basically giving herself a dust bath, which is quite nice because they've not had a chance to do it. The soil has been too too wet for too long. I have given them a dust bath with more dry soil, but do they use it? <laughs> no, because why would they? But yes, sorry, back to the plants. Um, the other thing that I will do, and I might show you and kind of talk you through it, but it's going to be difficult to see because it's further down below. But uh, I will show you now. I might even be able to, oh, actually, I'm going to be able to take little snaps with my phone and then add them into the video. But what I would normally do is because the water that I'm using, so this water has already got liquid gold leaf in and it's got a very weak solution in it. So what I would normally do when it's fresh water with liquid gold leaf, because I will recycle the water as I'm watering, essentially. I know it's not the best thing because if there's any pathogens or if there's any pests, you can easily pass it around most of your plants. My plants are so close to each other that <laughs> things like that will pass around quite easily in here. And I've, since I've started, I have done some variation of this and I've never really had a problem. So I'm okay. Am I saying you should do the same? Probably not. But it also means I'm not wasting a whole bunch of water because watering these plants and using that water once would mean that I'm wasting an awful lot of water. Basically. So what I will normally do when it's fresh like that and it's got the liquid gold leaf and it has only passed through non-soil substrates, so I'm talking sphagnum moss or semi-hydro, I will do all of the sphagnum mossy, semi-hydro-y mix plants first, basically, because they won't leave as much residue and I'll leave that water after it's cycled a few times from all these different plants to water the soil mixes basically. So what I will normally do first is I will bring down some of my orchids and for some of this I might need to go off camera just so I can show you because I need to get them off the wall. People that know, know. Um, let's have a look. Oh interestingly I think I only have to water one orchid today which is good i think i had quite a few orchids to water it yesterday so what i would normally do is i'll go and grab the orchid so this is the orchid that i was talking about hopefully hiding myself and you can, might be able to see so these are the mounts from north and this is a maxillaria tenufolia otherwise known as a coconut pie or a coconut orchid basically and it's kind of got the little kind of bulblets in it it's quite grassy the blooms aren't the most spectacular thing in the world hopefully i'll find some pictures of them here but they smell of coconut when it's in bloom so oh. this one nearly died on me last year so i had to buy a new plant which this is a combination of my plant that was dying the smaller bits and the larger bits were the newer one that i bought and in this mount it seems to be loving life so what i will do is i will put it into this tray and then i will just basically make sure that the whole thing as much as possible is submerged with water and after that's done i will basically let that sit in that water for probably five minutes or something like that maybe a bit less maybe a bit more it just depends really did i accidentally cut a leaf no i didn't that's good um and then because i've got that water and it's clear what i will do at that stage is and maybe that is a leaf that's kind of dying off slightly um what i will do at this stage is because i've got that water reservoir there and let me you can see the magic happen as we're speaking because I can do it on my phone so you might be able to see. What I will then do basically is bring in some other anthuriums usually which are in semi hydro and put them into the same thing so it catches more of that excess water. So I need to grab the erysmoides. And as I always say, just because it's on the app saying that it needs watering doesn't mean it absolutely has to. Double check, especially that's where the clear pots come in really handy. So just a little update for you there. That's the Arisamoides at the moment. And this is the Zara X Michelle. It had a 
tiny bit of a spy my issue. Might be able to heal the pebbles falling down. It's a joy for me to clean up later. But so both of these will basically go in there. And that's why you can see the predatory satchels on there as well. I do swear by those satchels, especially in the winter, because they do cover quite a few sins and they are colder tolerant kind of pest predators. And I'll see about putting the name at the top. So all I'm doing now is just making sure that that on or kind of semi hydro mix from soil ninja is fully saturated in the same kind of tray litter tray that i had before and i will grab your little video so you can see what the situ is maybe you can give you some close-ups of that new spanky new leaf basically um, also, these videos that you'll probably be seeing on your screen, please ignore the horrendous yellow fluorescent Crocs. There's the one that people that do know want to wear at Crocs, because I still think they're ugly, but they're so comfortable. So I've come around to them. It looks like SpongeBob SquarePants on my feet at the moment. So, but I'm comfy. I'm pottering. It's the holiday break. It's the in betwixtness. I think it's called. So. Bear with me. Right. So these have been done. Let me just take them off really quickly. Zara X Michelle. Mm -hmm. Maxillaria Tenifolia. And the Erismodes, I think, is very top. Yes. Excellent. And that kind of automatically refreshes so I can kind of see where I am in my trade regime. I try not to bring everything down. As always, bring things out, let them drip out. You don't want to put in things that are sapping wet. These, both of these um, anthuriums would probably have reservoirs if it was the summertime but there's no bit near enough light that is happening now because january in the uk is gray and gold so but so for now i'm kind of using the semi hydro as if it was just regular soil basically and the predominant reason for that is that essentially what i have found is if i put them in with the reservoir in the winter i'll tend to get root rot really really quickly if i don't uh, there's better chance that my plants are going to do a lot better in the winter basically or basically not get half destroyed because they've lost like half their foliage because of root rot in the winter because of over watering so double checking i'm just kind of doing the squish test on the orchid to see if it still needs a bit of watering it does so i'm going to leave it in for a tiny bit longer all right oh, only problem with this when there's so much water around my phone has constantly got water drop inside so let's see what else is needed right uh that's looking quite full so what i'll do is i'll kind of schedule things around this is going to probably take me longer than any of my average watering sessions because i'm actually talking you through this but um this becomes a bit more efficient so if i know that the orchid is soaking and i've done these things but that cat litter tray is looking quite full i will then fill up my little yellow watering can and go for the plants that i know are in reservoirs and need to have reservoirs because then i can just do that really quickly so i'll do that now uh let's tick off a few other things that have been watered mm -hmm. The good thing as well with the app, like for instance, I know now because I checked some of my other plants that are in the greenhouse for the winter. I checked yesterday and I went to water one of the other plants and the plant that I was supposed to water today, it's still quite wet. So I just selected that plant and just went, uh, check again, I think that was it. Um, I checked with me again in one day, two days, three days, four days, five days, a week basically. So you can kind of push it back without having to worry too much about things. Now, let's go for, let's see. Mm, let you know, the orchid can probably go up now and that will save me a bit of time and angling so that you can see some of the benefits and one of the reasons why I love the mounts from the north is they've also got drainage holes on the side 
So if I'm doing something like soaking them in the way that I am, I can just, just let them drip dry as much as possible. So this bit can be a bit tedious if you've got quite a few going on, but at least it happens basically. So the coconut orchid as well, the Maxillaria tenophonia, tends to be a plant that will appreciate uh, a tiny bit of extra moisture as well, so I'm not too, too fussed about this. And then I'll just put it back really quickly in. And then all I'll do is, and that's the sloshing that you might be able to hear, I'm probably going to be off camera for this, is I'll basically take the whole litter tray and dump it back into the red large watering can. I shall spill everything on the floor. It's fine. It's a usual thing that happens in here, which is the reason why I got the floors that I got. And I think I've done another video on how technically I've set up the conservatory, so I'll link that at the top somewhere. But um, let's have a look. So next few plants. Right, so some of these are gonna be off screen for you. So again, red can that I've just filled up. And you can see now why I water the way that I do in terms of like staggering it out because I know that, that water hasn't been in soil now, it's only even been in sunny hydro or sphagnum moss. So this will now go and water my hybrid as far as we've come to consensus, Anthurium, Metallicum, some form of hybrid basically of that one. So that I can't move is way too big. But it is in semi-hydro, it's got a container at the bottom, because I can't move it, I then use this to siphon off the water. So let me do that. Okay, so that is now done. Let me grab my variegated Monstera Atencernii Aurea, which is um, behind the camera. <laughs> Bring that here. And I've already seen that I need to water the Anthurium Microspadix. So we'll bring that here too. So both of these, so that is <laughs> the update on the Aurea Monstera Variegata. Still looking busted as. And this is the Microspadix which I will say out of all of my anthuriums, this is the one plant that if there's even the hint of a spider mite anywhere, it will always go on this. So I cannot have this without the satchels on it at any time of the year. So these ones, obviously they've got their own wasps, but I'll take these out, I'll pop them into the cat dish tray, trusty as it is, and then just fill them up. You might have been able to see, so the Anthurium Microspadix is, and they both basically sit next to each other. The Microspadix is in a cash pot because I want to keep some of that moisture in, because whatever it is, it is still an Anthurium. And that will focus, there we go. Um, but I don't do the same with the Monstera, because the Monstera, I want as much airflow to go towards its roots. And you might be able to see, <laughs> or the holes that I've drilled into the plant. If I just move back, hopefully you might be able to get that to focus there. So there's obviously good reasons for that. A monstera is a monstera. It will need as much airflow as possible. I don't know if anybody else does what I just did there. That's why it took me a tiny bit longer than you would have thought is I'll put things down that I'll make sure that all the foliage is set in a place so it's not touching other plants so I don't get a bug highway basically but that's maybe my craziness but I'll do that those both are in oh another couple of anthuriums now so another one that's behind the camera so let me deal with those first
And this is the Anthurium nigrolaminum GG, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And one of you absolutely amazing people out there, I will not name names in case they don't want me to tell their name. Um, we did a plant swap for this plant basically and the roots are looking spectacular you might be able to see there if you want to focus there we go and um it's doing really well it still hasn't it's interesting because i know some other people that have got this and apparently it grows like wild for them um and it grows really really quickly for an anthurium granted that was in the summer um I got it in the summer, so it took a while to acclimate. I still got the same two original leaves. There was a new leaf that was coming through. The roots are all looking healthy as anything, but for some reason that bit rotted out. So I'm back to square one in terms of the new leaf, but still really, really enjoying this plant. And again, a really good example of what I was telling you with your wish list and stuff like that. Put them out there either on Instagram or something like that, because you might get people that reach out to you, like this individual that did with me, and just said, oh, actually, I've got that plant, and you've got a plant that I want. Would you like to do a swap seat? Yes. Ta-da. Good comp. Good plant comp. Right, let me put this back. Okay, so that one's me now again. I thought I'd move all the ones that are kind of movable. I'm kind of realizing quite quickly that there's quite a few of these that are in and around the house, so I might not be able to show you, but I will get as many on this video as I possibly can uh, before my battery dies. Well, as I said, first time I'm trying this, so let's see how long the battery lasts on this. Um, all right, let's go. So I've got the Anthurium Balawan. Balawan. I'll see if I can put it at the top somewhere. Um, but this is a really cool plant. Because it might be small now, and I will show you this whilst kind of finding my face so you can kind of maybe get that focusing on some of those leaves. It doesn't look like the most interesting thing in the world, but check this out. Go on to Google, do a search. These get absolutely ginormous. That's when I got it small. <laughs> I can deal with it getting bigger and then I can deal with the space around it. There's a new leaf. This has been a prolific grower. It hasn't really missed a beat or skipped a beat, even as the word, since I got it. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I got this as part of an unboxing from Road Tropicals. And I think I've done a video when I got this delivery in. So, really, really rate this plant. It has been really, really good. But it is one of these other anthuriums that tends to go in a colander. And would this probably appreciate a moss pole? Probably yes, but it is on a janky support stick for the wing. So it's doing okay, and the roots are coming in a lot nicely. It's loving life in a semi hydro. And again, a shuffling the water around from the catfish tray. Now, as I mentioned, a few of the plants that are kind of slightly off camera, but I'll talk to you through them. I have got my Anthurium rogulosum, which is back there, which again is another situation where a big plant, pot, water, tray, reservoir, I'll fill that in with that one because it's a bit larger and I do try to flush it, but there's only so much water that that container will take. So I'll flush it and leave the water in the container whilst I do some of my other watering and then drain it out. So that's another Anthurium down. Oh, now I've got my Anthurium arrow and my Anthurium clavigero, which is on the shelf behind me as well. Dense. Can't move you at the moment, but it is there and I'll do the same thing. But with that, I'll kind of siphon off the water immediately. I 
actually no light to your face. I'm not siphoning off the water. These the plants are right next to the radiator, so they just keep their reservoir even in the winter. Okay, so those two are now done as well. But yeah, tell me about how your kind of break has been down in the comments below. Did you enjoy yourself? Did you, I'm assuming this will probably come out after everybody's back at work. I am sorry on behalf of all of us, basically. But, uh, or maybe not, depending. Some people I know who have got like loads of responsibilities and large families that are dealing with all of that over the holidays, they probably like their break is when they go back to work. So if that is you, how's up? Um, yeah, have you all had a good time? Did you manage to kind of posh around a bit with your plants the same, the same way that I'm doing? Did you enjoy it? Did you manage to get some downtime? Tell me down below. I really want to know. Uh, just because I'm always curious to see what, what do people do during the festive break. So I'm trying to see now, just taking off some of the other ones that I've just watered with you, but I've talked you through it, but not taking them off the list. So. Let's see which ones we might do with you. Mm -hmm. right. Got some gonium next. And this is the Ngurang Lima, if I'm not mistaken. Again, apologies if you are from that region of the world and I have butchered the language and the name of this plant, but I still don't know how to pronounce it properly. Um, that is another thing as well that kind of the people that have been here for a while will know, but if you're new, welcome. But what you might not be aware of is, generally speaking, I might glance back at some of the comments of like older videos from a few months back or even like a few weeks back. But generally speaking, I will be around talking in the comments and kind of attracting all of you for the first 24 to 48 hours. It's the only thing that's feasible with my kind of lifestyle in terms of like the work that I have to do with caring for the actual plants, with editing, caring for all the other animals. That's all I can do most of the time. So I do apologize if you kind of commented on an older video and you're just like, I know he's being really rude. He hasn't responded back to me. I don't check back on them. I think I might be wrong, but I think it's over 300 videos now. And just to paint a picture for you all, imagine having 300 group chats open at any given time on something like WhatsApp and having to interact with every single one of them. <laughs> you wouldn't be doing anything else like all day long. You'd just be dealing with that. So that's unfortunately how it needs to be done. So if somebody has told me how to pronounce this on the video that I did recently, saying, can you please tell me how to pronounce this? Apologies if I've missed it. It's probably because it's been a few days and it might have been a comment that came in later. Yeah. Um, so I'll take that off the list as well. You see why this can be quite easy because I'll go back and just go, oh, yes, take this off and take this off. And I've done that already, basically. So I'm trying to think and see if I've got many others that are on. Setting hydro, there is one more, and then we can start watering some of the soil plants. And I think I might start wrapping up this video purely because a lot of the other stuff is out in my other spaces. And I I'm not dragging the camera around for this one. If you want me to do another one of those, I did do a tour of my kind of house areas with the plants a while back. Let me know if you want a refresh of that and we can take it a bit slower this time around and I can talk you through some of the things. But let's go for the next plant that is in Semi Hydro, which this was one of the plants from Kaylee Ellen's rescue boxes. And this is the Philodendron Jerry Horn. Really, I'm hiding my face so you might be able to see. It's an interesting plant. It grows really, really, I don't want to say weird, but very tall and very leggy, at least in my experience. It's not a plant that I would have ever have chosen to buy. And I've seen it several times, but I'm just like, hmm, I've got to really do it for me. But 
as it came in one of the rescue boxes, I'm just like, oh, okay, you know what? I'm quite glad I got this in a rescue box because I'm actually enjoying this quite a bit, actually. It's not been a particularly difficult plant to grow. These are the tower pots that I think you can get these, at least here in the UK, from. So Ninja has these on a regular basis, and Sarah at Eastern Tropicals has them on a regular basis. I swear by these, I really, really like these. Either these, pretty much the only pots that I'll use these days, so either these tower pots, or I will get orchid pots, clear orchid pots, and cut holes in them like you saw with the Monstera Adamsonii variegata. So I'll make sure that is drained, and back it goes. And that one does have a bit of a reservoir, so I'll go and fill up. I've only got a tiny bit of water left in the red one, so. And there we go. So, little tip that maybe I haven't mentioned, and this is why I like the app and being able to tick things off. So, remember what I just did with the Rogulosin, which is I watered it and I left the water in the water reservoir. I won't untick that because. Theoretically, that hasn't finished, been watered, basically. It hasn't been watered fully yet. So what I'll do now, when I need to go and siphon it off, that's still on here. I'll go and siphon off the water and then take it off. And now that I've drained off that water, this would be the time where I'll go in and make sure that it's been ticked off. Yes, it's been watered. And I can tick that off properly. There we go. So that's nice and easy. And that's a good way because I know some people, especially when you're watering loads, I'm just like, <laughs> I forgot. And there was water in there. And I'm just like, you need something like this. So as long as you're checking at the end of your watering to make sure that you haven't missed anything and everything's been ticked off, you'll still see something that hasn't been ticked off and you're just like, I thought I watered it. Go and check. Because <laughs> what you might have done is what I just did is leave a water reservoir in it as well, just maybe so it can bottom water or maybe so it can kind of hydrate the semi-hydro a bit more. That will kind of help basically. I'm just kind of looking at battery ways. I might need to start wrapping this up because the battery is about to die. Not because this is a particularly long video, but because uh, I've been playing around with new toy before I started filming. So the battery was already not particularly full. So I'll know for the future though. So let's have a look. So the majority of what's left now is soil or kind of far away from the camera, but let me show you. Uh, what's that one? Ooh, yeah. Well, let's bring out the unicorn. It's still the unicorn is still quite tiny, but I have kind of tried to tie things up. I did say that over the Christmas period I might try to repot this. So actually, what I might do to repot possibly. Yeah, so what I might do is I might water this right now and I'll do this off camera and I repot because I'm time basically but that's the spirit of a sancti a seedling still okay it's still small but yeah so actually i know one of the things i do need to water is the milano crisis behind me which is looking busted but that is its watering day today so i will do that oh, for the people that were curious this is the now closed bloom from the philodendron was now dense. I did take pictures and I will see if I can add them here. Uh, I'm quite glad I did because I, I caught a picture the day that it opened and it was literally open for one day and that was it. I thought it might reopen again when it closed. No, 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 no. That was it one day. So.
So whether or not that's normal for the ethanol then to only flower for the one day and then stop, I don't know, but that's what I've experienced. Uh, yeah, the had this bloom once in my hair. So that's what I'm experiencing at the moment. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I could possibly water with you right now. So you can see. Yes. My Monstera Adamsonii mint variegated. The slightly diseased looking one. Uh, oh, there you go. Let me see if you can see it. The newest lead there. Someone focus there. We go. So, this one's really cool. Not really cool. I still think it looks a bit diseased, but I will say that in relation to the other variegated one, this grows like a dream. It grows like a regular Adansonia. It doesn't grow particularly fast. Not yet, but it's not. It's not even mature yet, basically. But so far, so good with it. It's, it still doesn't excite me. And as I mentioned on that original video when I was talking when I got this, it was just the fact that it was so cheap. So just a bit like, eh, we can try it. Um, and I would imagine this is, this propagates a lot easier than the sectoral variegated one rather than the one that's kind of minty or kind of diseased looking. <laughs> but yeah, so that is that one. That is now in a new section where I had propagations before. And those propagations I did stand by my words from my most recent video uploads where I have downsized it and things kind of have taken places already. So, the, so I said, you're not going to notice as much of a difference on the videos, but I know that I've downsized, so, which is good because I'm actually utilizing some grow lights a lot more efficiently. Well, let's have a look. Wipe off all the water. <laughs> Ah, the new pink princess, <laughs> which is actually this one sticking to its name. Um, and it's not a caca princess, it's actually got pink on it. I mean, that's better than any other pink princess that I've been able to grow previously. So, yeah, and it's got it's got some levels of pink on there, basically. So. It is a quite, quite good. Um, and this will just get watered to the same way that the others were. But you can see now what I mean by that, because what will happen is this is all draining down into that cat litter tray, basically. But, uh, which is also why my bone is getting splashed. Normally, I would be doing this within the tray, so there's, there's no need of a splash, though. But... That's why I did all my semi hydro -E stuff first, because the water was relatively clear of anything else. If you look at the water now, there's kind of particulates, there's kind of particles of the kind of soil mixes within that. So I don't want to be using that then in a semi hydro because then I might be introducing things that I don't want in a semi hydro environment. The semi hydro environment is relatively sterile as far as I'm aware. Obviously, the water's going to have things and moving things around. But yeah, I just don't want to be adding in soil. It's the same reason where if you're moving plants from a soil media into a semi-hydro media, you want to get as much of that soil media off before you put it in the semi-hydro. Similar thing basically with this. So I'll make sure that it's drained off fully. And did this snap? Of course it did. Because there was one... <laughs> All the people that know what that is with... Uh, being princess, uh, that snapped as it was trying to come out. So, if you know, you know. Okay. So, I think I will wrap it up here mainly because my battery is about to go. Um, I've got a tiny bit more watering to do. I think I've probably got about half the plants, I would say, still to go. But as I said, battery is dying off. 
you might never see this video because if there's zero sound in this, whether or not it's salvageable, and as I said, I can do it a talk over that would be fine. Hopefully you will see this. Hopefully it will work. But considering that this is the first ever video that I'm filming on this <laughs> camera, I'm not that happy. But if I do, and I've posted this, and you see this, and you enjoy this, do let me know in the comments <laughs> down below. <laughs> I think I may be going to start doing what Nikki used to do a while back on her videos. Maybe we'll choose like a emoji that you can all leave down below if you've got to the very end of the video. So if you've got to the end of the video, maybe give me the emoji with the palm tree basically down below and I'll know which ones of all you've got to the very end of the video. But yeah, hopefully you'll see this. <laughs> if you have, hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.